Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we have a rotating wheel. It's stationary and rotating, so therefore it only has rotational kinetic energy. And then we push a brake against the wheel. Notice that the friction coefficient of friction between the wheel and the brake is 0.3, and the force at which the brake is applied is 10 newtons. Not a lot, but what we're trying to do here is, first of all, calculate the initial kinetic energy of the rotating wheel, the friction force, and then finally the number of rotations the wheel will have before it comes to a stop after the brake is applied. Let's first find the kinetic energy initial. The kinetic energy initial, since it's rotational kinetic energy, is equal to one half times the moment of inertia times omega squared. In this case, we're given omega, that's the initial omega, so I'll go ahead and put the initial omega there. We also consider the wheel to be a solid disk, therefore it's one-half times one-half mr squared times omega initial squared. Plugging in these values, we get equal to one-quarter mr squared times omega initial squared, or one-quarter times m, which is 12 kilograms, times the radius, which is 0 0.4 squared, times omega initial, which is 50 quantity squared, and that will be the initial kinetic energy of the rotating disk. 12 times 0.4 squared divided by 4 times 2500 equals, and that'll give us 1200 joules of initial kinetic energy. All right, now let's calculate the friction force. The force friction, by definition, is always equal to the normal force times mu. In this case, the normal force will be the 10 newtons, so this is equal to F times mu, or 10 newtons times the coefficient of friction is 0.3, which is equal to 3 newtons. So that's the friction force applied to the rotating wheel. Now we need to try to calculate the number of rotations before coming to a stop. For that, we're going to use the equation that the energy initial equals energy final, which means that any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy must equal the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any heat loss due to friction. Well, notice here that there's no potential energy because the wheel doesn't change any height, so we can simply say this is equal to zero, and there's no work put into the system. We can call that zero as well. It does have initial kinetic energy, which we calculated to be 1,200 joules. The final potential energy is still zero, and the final kinetic energy would have to be zero because the final situation is that the wheel is completely stopped, the brake has done its job, and stopped the wheel, which means the equation now comes down to the initial kinetic energy equals the heat loss due to friction. So how do we calculate the heat loss due to friction? Well, it's the work done to overcome the friction, or it's the work done by the friction, I should say, not to overcome the friction, but the work done by the friction, which is force times distance. The kinetic energy will therefore equal the friction force times the distance the best way to express what the distance is, is to simply say as the wheel turns, a certain amount of the surface will be pushing against the brake, or the brake will be pushing against the surface. So if we multiply the circumference of the wheel times the number of times the wheel went around, that will be the total distance that the brake will push against the wheel. So in that case, we can say that the initial kinetic energy is equal to the friction force, times the circumference of the disk, which is 2 pi r, times the number of rotations. And after all, that's what we're after, the number of rotations is what we're trying to find. In other words, we can then say that the number of rotations is equal to the kinetic energy initial of the disk divided by the friction force and divided by the circumference the 2 pi r of the disk. Now we can go ahead and plug in all the numbers. The initial kinetic energy is 1200 joules. The friction force is 3 newtons. And the distance is 2 pi times the radius, and the radius of the wheel is 0 0.4 meters. And that will give us the number of rotations
made by the disk before come to a stop. 1200 divided by 3, divided by 2, divided by pi, and divided by 0.4, and we have a total of 159 rotations before the wheel comes to a complete stop. And there's another very nice example of how to use rotational kinetic energy and, in this case, how a brake works on a rotating object. And that's how it's done.